Satan who is good to know all is well with you. And we are pleased to know that we are in good company with you. We want you to know that we value you. So we stayed with you for the last few weeks on the same topic. Why? Because we understand life and the challenges it poses on all mankind. We also share from the Bible some of the experiences great men and women of God face in their lives journey, but were successful. Why? Because of their faith, belief, trust, and confidence in God. We encourage you, our precious viewers. We said before we value you. You are precious to us. And so we encourage you, don't give up. God is able to see you through. We want you to know as you look at us that his grace is sufficient for you. His strength is made perfect in weakness. And so we want to stay with you. We're not going to leave you. We're not going to abandon you because we love you and God loves you. So welcome, welcome and enjoy the program. Thank you. We go way back to the book of Genesis. And when God created man, God recognized that the first man, Adam, was alone and he created a helpmeet for him. That suggests to all of us that as human beings, we are um, social creatures. We need company, we need companionship. But there are three important concepts, three important words that for there to be good relationship, good interaction, um, there must be faith, there must be trust, and there must be goodwill. And if we can elevate that to the level where um, they are part and parcel of our daily interaction, whether in the family, whether in the community, whether in the nation, we would have achieved um, or at least we would have moved a great step forward, a giant stride forward towards excellent relationship, irrespective of our race, our ethnicity, um, irrespective of where we live, if we can embrace those three concepts. Um, over the weeks, we have been talking about it. We've been sharing different scenarios. But I want to point to uh, a portion of scripture in Deuteronomy chapter um 19 and verse 14 and 15 when the children of israel um got into the promised land it was promised centuries before one of the things or one of the cardinal rules that god established was the importance of being contented with what has been assigned to you and he was referring specifically here to land and let me read what the scripture says Verse 14 says, when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you as your special possession, you must never steal anyone's land by removing the boundary marker your ancestors set up to mark their property. Um, those of us who have benefited from um, public policy where we have a land given to us, one of the things we look first of all for is the boundary markers. And so we ensure that when we build or whatever we build, we are confined to those markers. Similarly, nations are the nations, the territory of nations are defined by markers. And but we find over the years that countries, even individuals, are tempted to remove those markers. But the word of God stands, the word of God says that he defines the bond of our habitation. So this evening, we want to examine um, those concepts um, within the parameters of boundaries. Gentlemen. Thank you very much um, for that introduction, both of you. And um, I'm in absolute agreement with the, with the observations made. I'm thinking, however, that we need on our side in that is in Guyana, we need to have a conversation, especially with our young people. 
you know, it is not mystifying that the authorities in Venezuela could think and that their community, their people are in sync, in step with them. They think this way because over the years, irrespective of who was in charge, they have kept this claim, even though the claim is 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 has no legal standing. They have kept this claim alive in the minds of succeeding generations. So whereas on this side of the border, where we live, where we are citizens, only those who pour into this matter, uh, the majority of our population are young, young people. And I don't know how deep they have an understanding. So I will, I'm encouraged by, by um, the promise that we will have a PR campaign second to none, which will seek to educate our young people and to persuade them wherever they live, whether they live in Region 4, where the capital is, or seven, eight, nine, ten, wherever you live, two, three, in all the regions, even in the diaspora, the campaign has got to be deep and wide because we have a good case. And don't let's just depend on the historical fact of, of this case that we have. You know, don't remove the ancient landmark. For all those who are Bible reading people, this is 1899. And six, 60 years after 1899, the Venezuelans had no problem with, with disagreement. And all of a sudden again, it has flared. We need to keep banging away. We need to keep making the point that Esequibo is ours. We need to show, produce. You know, we are we are doing a lot of sloganeering and and big billboards across the city. We need and across the country. We need to uh, get the creative skills of um, those who do those kinds of things and put it big up, big maps across, including our own Esequibo showing the line of demarcation. You could see it as you drive past. You must be able to see it as you drive past, wherever you are. And that's why that kind of, 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 of public relations campaign is, is very important. Um, very many times, in order for me to understand some biblical concept, I have to go back into, into um, I use Google a lot, but then things like this, the maps of the ancient world and even our current world, I go back to that in order to understand the context of a story. We will share one with you in a moment in order for us to understand what's happening about this claim. I'm saying that our claim is we have a correct claim, the best. Amen. And we need to be able to to convince our own people, not just the folk at the ICJ. We need to convince through public education. Little children in primary school must know Esequibo is ours. And we have to be able to build line upon line, word upon word, because biblically, uh, we should not, you should not remove the ancient landmark should not remove your neighbor's boundary and these are very important principles that we'd like to encourage excellent excellent bishop added to the approach the importance of sensitization it would it would be a great opportunity to engage the different forms of of the arts whether poetry whether drama uh Nowadays, we have influencers in this country 
um, if we were able to use them to use their uh, their platforms uh, to bring awareness to this uh, to this this matter concerning Venezuela, I think we would gain great headway. We will have great impact. And so while the social media approach is excellent, tapping into our own resources, such as our influencers, using different art forms. I could only imagine hearing different poems on the radio or somebody writing a, 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 an updated version or modified version to not one blue sake, not one rice grain. Yeah, well, you know the rest. But if we have that now in, in, in a younger, uh, uh, in a, in a a form of music that younger people will will gravitate to. Um, I think that too will help us. So we have we have to take a multi prong approach, and we can do it. And I like that the political leadership is united on this matter, and I I trust God that as we stand together, that we will advance and we will be successful. You know, uh, Pastor Griffith. One of the important aspects of life in terms of a process, when people are part of a process, when uh, there's a sense of ownership, when, when they are involved, and um, I couldn't agree more with us as we encourage our young people to be a part of this process. Um, the thing about it is we have to galvanize that sense of nationhood again. We have to use our airwaves, uh, our national songs. I don't know when last we've played them on the airwaves. My brother, he was asking, he doesn't know when last we played the national songs. Well, up to last Thursday morning on the radio, I... Being a part of the radio, I ensure that once I'm there, once every day, a national song is sung, is played. Um, I think what we are examining is the different fronts upon which we can fight or we can resist the enemy. It is clear from scripture that we are dealing with someone who can be classified as much as a bully. You know, it is unjust, unfair to remove your neighbor's landmark. But our fight has been for many years among ourselves, not quite considering that there is an enemy out there to fight. I was reading recently from the, from a, um, a publication from the World Health Organization, and they were speaking about protecting yourselves from further pandemics. And they made an interesting observation that the pandemic itself generally don't kill. It is the underlining conditions that we generally have, which comes out of um, lack of real care, eating properly, exercising, sleeping, it is those conditions that the pandemic disease takes advantage of. And I get the sense that someone wants to take advantage of our divisions that we have. Of course, as a people, we have our own challenges. But now, this time, this is an opportunity for us to unite as a people. Let no one take advantage of us because of our disagreements that we have. And yes, of course, every organization dies at the level of the, their investment in the young people or in the youths and children. And therefore, if our fight is going to be real and sustained, of course, our youths must become involved. Many of them have not known, have not gathered a comprehensive understanding of where this fight is, where it started. No one, all they know that there is a conflict. They're not quite sure who might be right or who might be wrong. We need to go back. I was also thinking about, um, oh, I miss our national service. I hard to say that, but it's true because we prepare ourselves for 
our external enemies, which we must always do, not just our own internal battles. We always this try is... to seek um, and try to extrapolate principles from biblical references. I'd like to direct your attention to Second Kings um, chapter 18. And while I recommend you read the entire chapter in order to get a context, it is about the same kind of situation. Israel and, and Judea, they were faced with they were faced at that time with an army, the expansionist policy of the Assyrians. They were making great strides in the world. And, um, oh yeah, of course, Egypt was there. I mean, the um, the military man, the, the, the prince who represented the Assyrian king, um, when he presented himself, to Judah, he showed his smarts. The language of the day was Aramaic. And uh, he also, when he got there, what is an important observation? I'd really love for you to read the entire conk. Um, but when he got there, he found he starts speaking about all that he had. In the verse, verse 13 says, In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked all the fortified cities of Judah and captured them. So Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent word to the king of Assyria, of, of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong, withdraw from me, whatever you demand of me. We haven't reached this point in terms of attack and siege or anything like that. What Where we are is we are going through the preliminaries. Remember, I'm not a military person to be able to describe in military terms what they're going on. They're going through what I would describe as the preliminary um, season, the preliminary events. But I want us to look a little closer. In verse 18 says, the Rapshaker, this is the top prince. He called for the king. But Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, these are the men who sat at the table. Shebna, the court secretary, Joab, son Joa, son of Asaph, the court historian, came out to them. Appreciate. Let's appreciate. Let's extrapolate that since then, God provided a picture of the cabinet the men who negotiated with their enemy. It was not just politician. It had the varying specialities, you know, in government at that time. And so the Rabshakeh himself understood when Eliakim said, don't speak to us in Hebrew. Continue speaking in Aramaic. But the Rabshakeh spoke in Hebrew because they were ordinary people listening. It is amazing how if we were to look at this account, using modern day public uh, public information, technology and information, that nothing is really new. He decided my war is not only against you, against the officials, 
I want the people to know, because he was going to create unrest. I want the people to know that we are going to crush you. And then he, he said, and you are relying on Egypt? You are relying on Egypt? I could call the name of a country that many Guyanese believe and are relying on that country should Guyana go through anything. The Rapshaker sought to undermine that. You relying on Egypt? And he described Egypt in a, in 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 a no ordinary way, as 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 a as a splintered reed, he called Egypt at that time, because they have all their divisions. It's amazing, but we want to make it clear. And now, young people, you need to know. You need to understand that our help is in the Lord. This has always been in the Lord, and it will always be in the Lord. But we have to understand what, what is going on so we'll know how to pray and we'll know how to marshal our forces based on the facts. Ghana, we have a sound case. Our position is not only sound, it's just. It is moral. And we would be able uh, to advance to any reasonable purpose, the correctness, any reasonable person the correctness of our position. But we need to have that holistic approach. Our people must know also that, like you correctly said, um, there's nothing new under the sun. And we see there is a um, rap shake approach um, being advocated by our Western neighbor to have direct talks um, with His Excellency, the President. Um, the math is before the CCJ, and CCJ. but the attempt there is to circumvent it, and the, the sorry the ICJ, the National Court um, of Justice, and it, the attempt is to circumvent that um, legal procedure and to have direct talk, and as we go through the account here with the rap shaker, um, to involve others who are not or who ought not to be involved. It's what they our neighbors are attempting to do but you know um more than that we are in the month of october and on the 14th of october 1966 um part of our territory um was invaded and is still being occupied by our western neighbor neighbor so they are already in violation of that 1899 award and also what we read in the book of deuteronomy don't remove the ancient landmark and, you know, further to that, um, I think um, Dr. Um, Abraham um, Torado, who was the Venezuelan commissioner, took part in the demarcation of the boundary um, between um, 1899 and 1907. And he was satisfied that the markers and the boundary markers that were laid, okay, were laid correctly. And so from the Venezuelan perspective, what was done, the award was given, was satisfactory, it was final, and it was perfect. So what we are seeing now, um, fellow Guyanese, it's a violation of what they themselves had considered full, final, and perfect. You know the rap shaker, Hello. thinking about the rap shaker and um, what he wanted to do, you really wanted to instill Fear, fear yeah. had torment, and fear could immobilize, fear could really cripple you and um and really bring you down. But it's amazing. I heard the other day there are two two ways you could look at fear. Um, you could look at it as you know, fear, forget everything and run, <laughs> or face everything and rise. So even in the midst of everything that we're hearing back and forth. You know, I have a sense that God is for us. And, and if God be for us, who can be against us? We have no might against this great company. You know, Jehoshaphat says, but we will lift up our eyes. We will look unto you from whence cometh our help. So let us continue to, by the grace of God, you know, uh, put ourselves in a position not to forget everything and run, you know, but to face everything by the grace of God, 
and rise. Amen. Right, right now, um, this is a call to conviction. Our every guy needs the one step that you can make to ensure that we have the best opportunity to secure what is ours is to understand and be convicted that what is ours is ours. And if we spread that word, we share that insight, and we truly have a conviction, not, not knowledge, not just knowledge that, yeah, it's ours, but we have a deep um, feeling of certainty, a deep acknowledgement of certainty that our land is our land. That is one of the most powerful steps that we can take as a nation to advance our growth, development, and retention of what is ours. So go out there, help people to understand why it's ours, help people to understand that there's no sort of dispute. It's a case where these things have already been resolved and that we will ensure that what is ours remains ours. We might appear to be David um, um, insignificant, small, standing before Goliath, but I'm grateful that we have a heart to stand up before Goliath and with God's help, we will succeed. We started this program by mentioning three cardinal principles. We will conclude with a reminder of those three principles. As we interpret, as we stand up and speak, there should be a great demonstration of faith. There should be a consistent rollout of trust at every level in our society. We must stand as one man and we must operate within and without with goodwill. We must therefore develop an equation built on success, faith, plus trust, plus goodwill, equals success. God bless you. And as Tommy Rose used to say, I'm proud to be a Guyanese. See you next week. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salisha on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.